Hi, Aubrey. Hi. How you doing? Good. Good. Okay, so Aubrey, you, my darling, are unique, right? Not only are you an amazing, active 11 year old girl with a lot of ambition, but you happen to have a condition. So tell us about this condition that you have. So I have dysautonomia. It's a condition that affects my autonomic nervous system and my autonomic nervous system controls uh, what your, n most of your body. Okay, that, that's a lot of big words. <laughs> How old were you when you were diagnosed with this? I was diagnosed with dysautonomia at six, and mo but I was lucky to have such a great team of doctors because most people, uh, they get diagnosed five to 10 years. Oh, really? Yes. Oh my goodness, okay. So it really hasn't stopped you though, right? I mean, you are active. You are out there, you're playing softball, you're playing soccer. You and I were just talking about the fact that you're in tournaments. So you're yeah. not casually playing these sports. I mean, you're all in, girl. So how how has your condition, though, impacted your ability to play these sports? Okay, so sports are actually helping me get through like doctor's appointments and testing because I know the next day that I'm going to be doing what I love and be on the field. So you use the sports as a motivation for you, yeah, for you to deal with your condition and you know, all right, if I do this and I'm strong, then I get to go out and I get to kick that ball or I'm going to go throw that pitch and it's going to be awesome and I'm going to have fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what does your condition though do to you when you're out there? What are some of the challenges you face when you're maybe playing a soccer game? Well, um, I feel like bee stings in my legs, which is like nerve pain. And then when I'm like running around a lot, I, ha I have to control my breathing. And then I might like get some arm pain or leg pain around there. But I know that it's just the issue of mind over matter. So, and then I, and that I can get through it. Wow. Okay, that's some very mature thinking for such a young girl. <laughs> You're 11 years old, and here you are already thinking like that. That's that's very impressive. That's very impressive, Aubrey. Thank you. Okay, so a very impressive young girl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, Mom, tell me though, what was it like though? When did you know that there was something going on? She was getting sick a lot. I was a first time mom, so a lot of the doctors in the beginning say, you know, kids get sick, um, sometimes often, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. But she was getting sick to the point we were in the urgent care a lot, hospital, they were starting to know her by name. Then when she started to faint, I was immediately like, no, they need to listen to us. They need to see us more. Something's going on. Your mom instinct kicked yeah, in. You're yeah. like, no, this is just more than your average colds exactly. and illnesses. And what was it like, though, when she was finally diagnosed, when you actually had a name to what was happening? I remember we were the three of us were in the car, and I just remember getting the call from the doctor and I felt a sense of relief that we had um, some kind of answer. Um, but then you start to look it up. Yeah. and go, oh my gosh, this looks different for everybody. Everyone's treatment's so different. Everyone has so many doctors. So I was kind of overwhelmed, because where do you start with that? How do I help her? Mm -hmm. um, the key was getting immediate help and support for her so she could thrive in her life. I love that, and certainly she is thriving in her she life. She is, yes. Yeah, so, so you, you've taken the right steps in the right yeah. direction. Um, but, but tell me though, because you had mentioned, this is different for everybody. So how has it been different for Aubrey? Like, how has it impacted her day-to-day -day life? So she takes, like she said, many medications three times a day. So we have to pack meds. We have to have an emergency bag with us at all times of salt products. Um, just a lot of coping things like wet towels, ice packs, um, heat packs. Um, we have rollers to massage her legs when the nerve pain starts to really make it tense for her. We did have to get a wheelchair. Insurance wouldn't cover it because she wasn't too disabled because she was an athlete, so we had to research the best wheelchair for her. Um, so it's definitely changed her life and our routines. Um, before sports too, the house has to be quiet and calm. We have to turn the AC on, we have to elevate her legs, just so she can be at that game. And then afterwards, we're carrying her off the field. She doesn't usually want her teammates to see. She wants to prove that she's a beast on the field. And this, this is a condition, it's called the most common condition that people don't know about, right? Yet. Okay, why? Why, why? why does it have that saying attached to it? Because it's not widely studied. There's not enough research because it's so different for everybody and there's five types. And so uh, not enough has been done in that area. And so that's why. It comes across in different forms. And so no one goes, oh, that's dysautonomia. It takes usually a couple years and seeing. How many doctors do you think you've seen? 12. At least 12. Wow and we've had at least 100 appointments. 
Why did you decide to go, you know what? I'm not gonna let this hold me down. I'll make sure others know too, because I want them to thrive. Because I just wanted the people out there to get earlier diagnosis. And, and you're also raising money too, right? Yeah. I'm raising money by selling like Team Aubrey shirts and doing cupcake for the cure, like bake sales. Mm -hmm. And my like teammates have been helping me with that. My cousins, my family, and my community have been helping me with that. So I was really lucky. And right now I'm at $4,000 and I really want to get to $5,000 because you know I'm just a kid and I thought that was <laughs> a big enough amount. How do you feel, Mom, to see your, your daughter do so do so well, and to not only do so well individually, but also do so well that she's helping others. Um, quite proud. Yeah. She's a true advocate, um, and she's helping others, and that's amazing. Um, and she's taken something that could be really kind of negative and like given up, but she's taken it and taken it in a really positive way. And so she's this Autonomy International's youth ambassador. She's wow. One of the youngest yeah. ones, um, and so. She's doing great things and I'm very proud of her. This year I've been working with Bill Dodd's office to get a state proclamation to declare October as Dysautonomia Awareness Month. So what type of message would you like them to know from everything that you're accomplishing and want to accomplish? So little girls with big dreams become women with, with visions. Little girls with big dreams become women with visions. Yes. I love that. Awesome. <laughs> Aubrey, thank you so much. This interview involves commercial content. The products and services featured appear as paid advertising.